Abbott and Costello in uproar at the opera. Abbott, pull yourself together. Costello, chum, we've been bunnies a long time, haven't we? I'll cut my arm off for you, wouldn't I? But hate me for all this, for this little, you hate me for this little pal. Always remember I did it for you. Abbott, I'll get a lawyer. You beat the rap together. What is it? Casello, I'm getting a job for you. Gee, don't thank me. No real friend could have done less. Wait outside. I got to face this thing alone. Mr. Snowgrass, you've got yourself a new porter. All right, Mac, you're hired. Here's your broom and dustpan, the rags. Who, me? I'm allergic to work. Dust, uh, save him for Casello. All right, Casello, here's a big job waiting for you in here. It's yours. Me, 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 me. Oh, oh, oh. The opera needs a star on my cover. Come on, Casello. Just a minute. The broom, cuss it. The janitor, the opera. I mean, the job. No, ever. Don't tempt me. My art, my career in the opera comes first. Huh? Okay, maestro, your trouble's over. I'm here, the man your opera has been crying for. His mistake. Ah, oh, this fellow conceived. Seated like a tenor. He's shaped like a tenor. I am reminded of the great Fajulu Frozozo. He shows exactly the right mm, spirit. I think I know him. Of oh, course, cool. like Lagigi, Lagigi, my new tenor. Uh, we were afraid you'd never come here. Hurry. Luigi, Luigi, that's cute. We must prepare for dress rehearsal this afternoon. Miss Purdy, the new star costume, please. Oh, a new tenor, though. And some tights, a spear and a wig for this uh, stooge. Dress rehearsal in ten minutes. Well, why do these things always happen to me? You did a kind of cheek, isn't it, Abbott? I must be going mad. Listen, you look, you look at me. You look, you look like a blimp, and I look like a scarecrow. I don't know how we got into this. We've got to get out. You can't sing. I can, can't sing. Who says so? Listen, I won't stand for it. It's torture. Goggle, goggle, goggle. A new turn and technique. A technique. What obligation divine? So get this. You can't sing, gar me. Nothing but jealous. Believe I'm expected on the stage. Me na ma la ma. Here, it pleases everybody. Quiet. First act. First scene. Shino Grani. Prelissimo. Prelissimo. That's cute. There must be some way out of this. Si no la guidi la mano, a galia mista gata va la guida. Pupo is my only chance, stop the music. So Nuligi never sings about a touch throat treatment. He's causing a massage. Sometimes I wonder why people aren't so kind to me. Shush, jish. I bet you think of everything. Go ahead, massage my throat. I hate to do this, Luigi, but your neck or mine. Abbott, this is treason. Well, you'll get this. So you can't sing, you can sing, can't sing. Listen to the real voice. You know, Albert, let's, last week I was taking a shower. Shut up for Renzo Renzo. What a voice. Oh, what a voice. Like a slippery harp. It reminds me of the great Ferrista Lorenzo. Here, make opera history. Not Abbott. Not if Abbott can help it. Abbott, come back. You can't do this to me. Sorry, you're all tied up. See you later, Nightingale. My only chance to find the real logo. Lucifer, doesn't that mean it look like a bad, bad Abbott? Nonsense, dear. Nobody could possibly look like Abbott. Let me be, let me be by, you, you, you peasant. My public awaits me. Okay, sorry, bud. We uh, you got the fr- singer Frankie. Huh, who is this Frankie compared to the Googie? 
I'll clip my ears and call me a bloodhound. I found him. You're going to the wrong work, my house, Luigi. Let's l- lend out, lend out your tonsils. Hurry up. Need on present. This the show can't go on with that great Luigi up. Attendance go, attendance go on. May we, that sublime Luigi. Act one, see one, the mist of Argola. The rain's oh, what a bad house out here tonight. You can't go on without the immortal Luigi. They can't. The struggle made me thirsty. I must find a, a cellar and some water bottled in a bottled bond. What a place. Looks like a speakeasy. Of a raise. There's a spring. Be well on the stage out to the trap door. Oh, fountain of magic fountain. Peer, peer. Fountain it gives running cold, running water. And see what else it gives. And look what else it gives. Here I am, kids, all on the top of the world, and all about that, that for a song. Quiet, babes, quiet, shh. I shall give you my love song. A warrior bold is a warrior bold is he. A warrior, a warrior very bold is he, he. Hell, the gang's all here. As the, uh, what the neck to do we care. What the heck do we do we care. Woo! The crowd goes wild. You go, oh, oh, Luigi, this is the greatest help thing since the oh, p- 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 plump. Isn't it, darling, this great Luigi? He is a great Luigi. Who am I? And they are, it's a Virgil Trump, the quoted critic. Notes to you, magazine, he's smiling for the first time in his career. Lou made it. I am not have to convince him. It was me who helped him. Wait a minute, Pud. Go back, go. Go back to your rooms. Flowers to the great Luigi. A kiss to the great Gigi. Abbott, see you in my dressing room. Let me in, my good people. I'm the great Luigi's, ma- Luigi's manager. Now, Lou, what do I get for that break I gave you? This, and make it snappy. And don't forget the break. You almost gave my neck. Abbott and Costello soup to nuts. I hope you enjoyed your dinner, sir. Mmm, mm, delicious. Dinner, yeah, it was okay. Costello, what are you going to do about this? 30, 24, 70 jeepers, creepers, creeps, Abbott. You were right when you said this was a high-class place. Got a razor. Patriotic, ain't I? Nothing like keeping prices down. But Costello... Even if this, if they are highway robbers, it's dishonest. You can't get away with it. Oh, you aren't kidding, bud. Trying to make take a rubber discount, huh? Sit down, either what you two pay up or I'll send you the back to wash up. But you can't get away with this. These prices. That's rubbery. I'll call the cop. Sheek. Oops. I beg your pardon. Looks like you're gonna gonna lose a customer. Looks like you're gonna lose your life. You're heading in the wrong direction, chum. The kitchen's back this way. Sorry, I must have lost my way to in the fog. That is an outrage. You're here for my lawyer. Oh God! And little old Covey's, you the two orders of fillet macaron and fresh garden vegetables. Brewing. Somebody's gonna pay for this. Well, I can assure you that I'm not paying for a mess or for that any meal. Good day, sir. For some, for somebody going to pay, I'm uh, not running a soup kitchen. I think we're it. Now, see here, my little, my good man. Let's settle this wa- this matter. A hey, gentleman, you of course know with whom you are speaking. No, if I, if I ever see you again, I'll be to be too soon. If you can't shell out for the meal, you ate the order, you ruined a bill for this trouble, you walked out and start washing dishes. Beg pardon, sir, but the cook and the head waiter just cook quit. 
What? How? What are we going to handle? The seven o'clock rush. Don't stand in like I stand in. We've got to do something about it. But it's too late to put an ad in the paper, sir. Relax, mister. Your trouble's over. I'm your new kid cook. But Abbott's a new head waiter. How much are you paying us? Huh? Say what? That again? Me paying you? Surely. I may look like an elephant, but I don't work for peanuts. Because, Sello, you're crazy to pretend you can cook. Or you can even fry an egg. Who's going to order eggs for supper? There now, how do I look? Well, you look like a cook, but looks are deceiving. Now remember, Costello, in a high-class restaurant like this, hamburgers cause Salisbury steak. They call it wrong things. Then, uh, then, what? Then, then they call it wrong worse things than that when I dish it out. So long, medium French fries, spring strings and harvards. A special cast liver and bacon with chur, candied sweets, a broccoli, hamantais and lacarte. Got it? Talk about double talk. I'll give it to me in picking letter. I must, I must understand it. Anything you can make head or tail around here would be a fish. As I do, why don't we substitute fish cakes and beans for the order the kids to the kicks back, kick it, kick him, your cello, Piscini, the grand opera star. Just give me a bowl, come, come in, come in, bowl of pot of spaghetti quick. You better give me a hand, we don't know the difference between elbow and macaroni and pig's knuckles. Casella, what are you burning in the, the oven, rags? Absent minded of me, Casella? I thought that was a cupboard. I'll put your suit in there. What are you running here? Free lunch for felines? A cat dragging off a huge chunk of raw steak. See, what? So what? I should have grilled it for him first. Don't you ever hear that too many cooks spoil the soup? Get out front and handle the customers before a customer swalk to the manager. Okay, okay. Spaghetti's coming. Ah, uh, but help. help. So, what's going on in here? Quiet, grab a broom. Oh, here, here. help me get this stuff back in the pot. We've got five minutes more to cook. What's the matter with the service around here? I ordered two steaks 15 minutes ago. There'll be a slight delay, sir. I just saw the head waiter step into the kitchen. Hey, waiter, where's the spaghetti? Coming up, sir. Take a gander at the sauce. It's fit for a gander. You fool, dog, you, how dare you stop me, Luigi Pasadani, the great operatic baron dome. And is it, and it, and that isn't Cosby. Get out, stay out. I've got all the customers I want, but the head water, which is hard to keep. You can't do this to me, the great Pasadani, Percy? I can, I will, and I do. Seven o'clock, and the place is three quarters empty. I can't understand it, Robert. There must be something wrong around here. What are you getting at, boss? Bet. Eek, how dare you? There, now, 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 little girl. Accidents have happened, you know. Ah, such perfect service. I'm sure I shall come here for every, dinner every night. You know what I've been thinking? Maybe there is an easier way for you and my old friend to settle up your... I mean, let's go back in the kitchen and talk it over. Sure, sure, keep thinking the same thing myself. Well, that, well, that's, you, that you, Abbott, draw up quiet chair. Those two-inch thick cargo grilled steaks. You ordered or getting cold. What's the matter? Lose your appetite? Grrr. Wait, I haven't finished. Casello, something tells me we'd better scram out of here. Now, not till you paid your junior dues. Abbott, wait for me. Sorry, Casello. I can do no... I no can do. I got a date at a drugstore with a girl who mis- mixes. 
Perez Moroz. Hey, hold it, Rabbit. You're not finished yet, the guy yet. I have an idea. I better be better than the last, your last one. The restaurant unfair to Abbott. There's the restaurant unfair to Costello. Is on the house this racket, real estate racket, you know racket, if you can't rent a room soon I, I won't have a roof over my derby. And you think that a rat would at least give his, his buddy a few second hand ten dollar bills. But what that scratched you and the door opening or falling in. Gee, how do you do, Abbott? I like to buy some real real estate. Sit down, Abbott. Bowers don't like, doesn't like to drive. Very nice po- pooch. You know, Casella. Set for this back, his back seat drive barking. Here, now here's a nice home. Yes, I don't want to fit the tenants that, the, the money's mice. How's this? Gee, the cooling system be swell. They were bo- if I were a box of one of our olives. It's quite a little palace. It's made out of genuine grass. Did, but why did you install mosquitoes? Only American, you know. Only American. I'm glad I got them too late. One thing about this place, you can't beat the lighting. I know, but you see, a house isn't for me. It's for him. And he says to the dog about the dog. Mickey the Mex, come on down to me, my beauty. I'll be sooner than you think, amigo. Today I propose to Lorota. Me and Lorota will go to the Pachapilla on our honeymoon. Ah, it's a Lorota. I was just taking some flowers into my office in the jail. Hey, 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 me too, Sheriff. I spent so much time there. It's no good, Bandit. He's taking posies to my Lorota. Mickey is on his way to Loretta, he thinks. It's very nice of you, Lobo. Come here, but he's going, he's going to... Really? He's going to jail? Phew, imagine me bringing flowers for the dirty jail. You need not... You need you just need more time to just get used to it. Ah, I think those flowers will look better, he, Louis, Louis, after all. Pig, you can't get... Do this to little Lobo. I can tell Lo- Loa you're in jail. I <coughs> send her for that. you out. Tell her you went out of town. Ah, Loa won't to marry that monkey. Maybe she can ha- have a beauty like me. Yow! I'm going to stop paying taxes if they don't do something about this rotten jail. Ah, little boy, would you like to sell your wilderness coat? One pesto. See, in a chinoa for a pesto to carry you where you want to go. Now I want to get to Lota well, before. Now I get to Lota before Mickey. Meanwhile, Calambra, if I had walked, I would have been here, there. He said, I have to push this junk heap. At the Lorondo rise in Loretta's first. Loretta will have no flowers, but after all, she have me. Yep. Rodriguez, my beloved, sweet Loretta. And on laughed and let, but not long afterwards, Sheriff Mickey arrives. So you, good, good bandit Loretta won't marry you. Go on and see for yourself, stupid old Loretta. Come on, uh, we're going to make this, take this sitting down, no? I'll wait with you. Sheriff Mickey and the Balampo, the terrible bandit, Otama, hatch a plot for getting rid of Rodriguez so they may continue rivalry for Loretta's hand without interference. And on that night, shh, I just, mm, quiet.
fetch me a rose. I grant I have been son. This fellow Vergigus is in your jail, Mickey. Nobody ever visits me, but you and me. Now how true. Please, Senor Sheriff, I did something for you, but what do you take me away is particular particular contraction. You are too beautiful, Senor. Loretta will never marry me with you around. Oh, no, not so that it is, Senora. You have made a terrible state. Really, Rodriguez? The competition eliminated the Roberto Senorates Loretta. Oh, Loretta, my beloved, you heard my song of love. Oh, it's not the elbow. I thought a pack of wolves was on the terrace. Loretta, my pigeon, I got rid of that handsome. Well, Jesus, you don't have to waste your time and love on him, only me. Get out of my sight, you bungling idiot. Run for your life, or it's it. Ah, sometimes I think I don't understand a woman. I gave her the opportunity to marry me, and what do I get? Buckshots. Come lead them. First, my tender Loretta shoots me, then you bring them back this disgusting pretty man. Shut up your mouth, Loretta. But Jesus is the brother, Loretta. Loretta's brother? Oh, I'm so happy. Ah, maybe Jesus would rather go to jail after all. I see. Where did you go? I mean, the sheriff. In the house, I think. This will be of uh, Loretta's first bath in a year. He wring his skinny neck. Whoops, beautiful. Burp. So long, amigo. I tell Loretta you're all wet up, Goggle. Ah, Mickey is a double crosser. So I brought your brother back to you, Loretta. Mickey, my hero. The end. Evan Costello bottled a bulge. The tense moment in a radium stadium. Peanuts, popcorn, bubblegum. Hey, Abbott, what's those guys doing down there? A quaint little game called football. Caracci is kicking off. Tisky, and him so young. What a... Why, well, Abbott, look at what I got. Casella, come back with that pig skin. I will not. We, this is fun. Come on, so stop kidding around. This is serious. Now, you t- now, now, are you telling me? Look, me, look. Puff, I've got to sit down. My feet are killing me. Now, see what you've done. Did I, did I do that? Indigo Tech needs that man. Go get him. And a little runt that ran into France too. Yes, sir. Yes, Coach, uh, Coach Roach. Go. So, mate, did he go text new Frenchman? My hero, football boy. Reminds me, remember, students, I am the teacher. Miss Casella, absolutely to do equals what? What's the matter with him? You're feeling all right, Professor? Is it de- easy or anything? But, uh, Mr. Costello, stop trying to drown me. Of all the intelligent, uncouth, insepid morons, you are expelled. Uh, hello, Coach Roach. Hi, Professor. Pref. How's my boy Costello making out? You're depending on Costello for the big game within... With, with, thank you. Ah, uh, hee hee. Never have I met such an intelligent goof. Swedlinder Scholar, he's brilliant. All right, genius. Be in the field tomorrow at sunrise. What are you going to do, shoot me? A falling dawn. Come on, boy. Hit him, snarl at him. Act tough. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, maybe, uh, how am I doing, coach? Hit that line harder, harder. You know something, Abba? You look worried. Look worried? Oh, I'm worried about it. Are we going, what are we doing here? What do we know about football? You, nothing. Me, I'm the star around here. Coach says I must know plenty. I must have. I, and when the time comes, I'll prove it.
Casello's time has come. It's Indigo Tech versus Thank You. We better sl- we've been slaughtered. They're punishing us over, all over the lot. Well, we want Costello. Where's Costello? Hey, there he is on the bench. Costello on the bench. It can't be. It is, but why? Get to the point, my boy. I'm saving you for the big moment. We go in the next play after oh, I tell you to get to, to. I told it to you, of course. Get it? Do I get in well? Let's slay him, Coach Roach. Hang on, handed. One minute to play. Casello, this is it. Get in there, fight, and remember the new play. Fight, fight, fight. There's my go. That's Here I go, Coach. And the secret plan, the new play. The new plan? What new plan? We'll ask riddles later. Victim. Sub, sub, I forgot sub. I told him, sub, the new play. Sub, sub, sub. Wham. Hey, what's wrong with this picture? <sighs> decisive, decisive matter. What? What? What to do? Wait, what? Hello, oh, Casello, reverse hats off. Play, we do this team and we win as you are, as you are, I bet. I can't, no, call a substitute. I want a substitute. Because I order you to come back, your hero. You'll carry on off. They'll carry you off the field. Buzz, buzz, Abbott. Will you wear a helmet? Okay. Right, right. Let's go. No. Thank you. Is suspicious. Hey, Coetzee. You think you trying some kind of trick? I don't know, but I do know who's got the ball. I know who's going to get it. It hit his right now. I see what you mean. Guess who? Wait a minute, fellows. I'm ready to change sides. I set your reasonable offer, please. And why they devil crossing spoil sports freedom that we elect? They've killed Abbott. But coach, isn't that illegal? Hold on. Who's that uh, on the other side of the field? It's Bulgy. I mean, Costello. That's funny. I know I had it, had it here somewhere. What's this? What is this? Must be you. What are you looking for? India Tech wins first time ever. Thank you. In fifty years, Casello for all American. Just a minute, folks. I'll be right up there. Wait, where's Abbott? Hey, Abbott. See, I know plenty about this game. I told you you'd be carried off the field. I want a substitute. The quiz master quandary. Jingle Jack Jones had an air of confidence. He strode in the stage of Bureau B, Coast to Coast Broadcasting Company. Sixty million record radio sets throughout the country were tuned to pick up the Whiz Quiz show, sponsored by Grizzle, America's softest soft drink. The studio audience made gave Jones a mixed reception. He showed off the hisses and box boo cheers. Because the programme was not yet on the air, his sponsors were representative and not be present this evening. A signal from the front control room, Jungle Jack, stepped over to the microphone and flipped the switch. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, he began in shrill voice. Once again, the, bo- the bottlers of Guzzle, America's softest drink, bringing you the whiz quiz show. Tonight, our studio stage is jammed with prizes. Prizes which will to those who send in the questions we have chosen for tonight's show. Prizes are concert contestants from our studio audience. All set, folks. Take it easy. Take it away, Mozart. Mozart Milligan, the cheerleader, twirled his baton. Musicians blurred forth the hot tune from the jingle jack cast. Cautious eye over the faces of the, in the studio audience. Jingle Jack has pleased at what he saw. He considered himself a sharp judge of human intelligence. Never have we seen such an array of odd-looking characters. He fitted very well with his plans, because here 
and throughout the studio in its jingle jack spotted seven peepers to whom he was indebted in amounts ranging from ten to one hundred dollars. Unknown to the sponsor of the broadcasting company, Jingle Jack arranged for tonight's program to pay off his personal indebtedness. Casting a second look over the audience, Jingle Jack well, felt confident his scheme would work without a hitch. By the look of their faces, Jingle Jack muttered under his breath, There isn't one who will give the name of Murphy Washington's husband. We're prompting from half the, from without prompting, half the covers. Joe Dinkin has slept have spent set up the first contestant from the audience. He's a fat little man in a rumpled grey suit and his Adam's apple bob nervously. He gave his name as Theodorus T. Cockingham. His home was in Cleveland, Ohio. A jungle jet direction, Mr. Cockingham drew a folded slip paper from a tall silk hat and passed it to him. Here's your first question, he cooed into the microphone. Send in from Miss Alicia Wilmot for Praise Providence from Rhode Island. If Mikus Cockerden can answer this question correctly, receive a deluxe model, North Pole refrigerated, equipped with a sensational new frostbiter, amazing device that thaws out frozen peas within 48 hours. Now, Mr. Cockerden, here is your question, Mr. Cockerden, shifting nervously from one foot to the other. A jingle read from the slip of paper, Upon the abduction of Mary Queen of Scots, who succeeded at the throne, the Christmas failed to pole. I up as a jingle. Jack pushed the microphone towards him. With. Jack hesitated because Hudson answered her. Son, King James I of England. Then became King James VI of Scotland. Jingle Jack gulped. That is, that is correct. He instooned a trace of Houston. Every next contestant, please. The next contestant was a woman. At least she looked dressed like one. It's hard. She was a hard, colourless face. Appeared suspiciously at Jack through thick lens glasses. He gave her name as Miss Priscilla Parsnip. A home as a Bowling Green, Kentucky. Jean grinned when he read the question she had. He, she had selected. He told himself he couldn't answer this one in a thousand years. I'll call up Benny. I tell you for the correct answer. I hope Benny hasn't forgotten his lines. This question could be, would be a duck suit for Al, Al, but Al is God, Jack remarkably gleefully. Oh, you must pass, might surprise us. If you think hard, Miss Parsons, here it is. When we discovered a mathematical system became known as pyrographical theory. In what century did he live? Miss Priscilla's party drew herself up proudly, cleared her throat, and cleared, replied in Kentucky jaw, Paragasis, the Greek philosopher. He lived in the 5th century BC. Jungle Jack didn't have a strong heart that he would have dropped dead. String of the concessions followed. Well, as lucky as first two. And during the break, it was commercial. Jack stepped down and whispered in the ear of Joe Deacon, the consistent selector. Joe was on a scheme with him. Some pick some dope, dopes, Jack pleaded. Sponsor had me thrown off the air. The rest of the questions are answered by the first contestants to take a crack at them. Don't send, don't, no, no, don't send up my, one, up a, up one of my creditors. They know all about the answers, by, they know all the answers by heart. Pick nothing but morons, Joe, or they're being terrible, James. Joe Dinkin winked slightly and nodded. Don't worry, Jack. Leave it to me. The contestants with whom Joe set up to the stage presented very strange appearances. Their knowledge of history, art and science proved amazing. Jack became frantic and suspected a double cross. Toward the end of the programme he discovered the questions and the select papers. A substitute brain twists of his own. But even then the trick failed to show a single contestant. For a single contestant, Jungle Jack, Jingle Jack was shaking like a leaf by the time the announcer was cut in. The final commercial. Jack didn't even pause to make a bow to his audience. He made his way quickly backstage without wasting time to breathe his hat and top coat. He fled down the fire stairs. Reaching his hotel, Jack warned the room clerk that he had been, was received. No visitors, no phone calls. He passed the clerk in a fifty a five dollar bill to see so he was sure the instructions. Fifteen minutes later, Somebody began pounding on the door to Jack's room. Soon after, louder, louder knocking, he began. For along the corridor was filled with angry voices. 
Benny of Taylor was yelling, Crook and others of Jack's creditors were circling a petition, petition aimed at ruining his credit rating. Finally, the hotel management sent up a couple of bouncers to eject the monetary mob. As their voices faded away, Jack called out from under his bed and flopped down in a chair. He could worry about his creditors later. Right now, he wanted to dream up an excuse to give his professor the way the questions had failed to stump a single contestant. Jack eyes removed the room and came to see West Valley, a strip of paper that someone had pushed under the door. On tiptoes, Jack went over and snatched up the folded note sheet. A note was it was in Joe Dinkins handwriting. It said, "Why didn't you Why didn't you read the newspaper, stupid? There's a national convention at school. Teachers in town for the weekend. Our student consistents weren't dope. They were delegates. <laughs>